Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. It is a very exciting milestone that I am presenting to you today. As of May 25th, I was actually half a year on estrogen and I feel like half a year is a pretty great milestone, so we're gonna celebrate it by talking a little bit more in depth than we normally do regarding my transition and HRT. Before I jump into the actual good stuff, I just wanna clarify a few points. First thing being, not every trans person is going to experience hormone replacement therapy the same. It's going to be different for everybody because everybody's body chemistry is different. So if you experience something different from me at your half year mark, it's not because either of us is wrong, it's just because our bodies are different and that's totally normal. Another thing I want to make sure you understand is not every trans person has to undergo HRT, it's only if it is something that's going to make you feel better. It is very much a medical treatment, not a cosmetic procedure, so make sure it's something that you actually need before you start going for it, okay? I want to start off by saying how grateful I am, not only to all of you, but to this country, uh, where it was fairly easy and fairly quick for me to get my hormones and to improve my life and to feel happier. There are way too many places where that is not the case and my heart goes out to all of you and I hope that with time and education we can make things better for you wherever you are. When I started hormone replacement therapy or when I started trying to start it, there was definitely a big huge focus on just getting those pills. It was the only thing I could think about, it was the only thing I wanted because I knew for a fact it was going to improve my life and it has. But I want to also let you know that once you start hormone replacement therapy, life it becomes more about everything instead of just about getting your pills and taking your pills. You can focus on more than just that and it's a very liberating feeling. And it's something that I'm grateful for every single day and I know that once you get your hands on your treatment as well, even if transitioning isn't what you're looking for but a treatment for a, like a mental health issue or even like a physical issue, know that once you get that treatment, once you have begun down that path, you can focus on more than just getting your treatment and life is so much better. So I know it may seem dark and very tunnel vision right now, but you will get to a place where there's flowers and there's valleys and you can take whatever path you want, okay? Something that confused me about HRT that I wasn't aware of was the reason dosages are there. So I figured if I could just get my max dosage estrogen and my max dosage spironolactone, I could see the effects the quickest and I would have the best results. And that's just not true. Some doctors will start you off on maximum dosage and if you experience bad side effects, they will tone it down. But my doctor is being more cautious so he started me at a minimum dosage and is building me up. And I'm okay with that because I know I'm on the actual, I'm taking the hormones and that's enough for me. He also clarified with me that it's not necessarily the dosage that makes the difference the quickest, it's how long you're on it. So even if you started at four milligrams estrogen, it's gonna take you a while to get to those results. Just like how I started with half, like what is it, 500 milligrams? No, sorry. Two milli one milligram? One milligram estrogen I started with, I think. And I'm at two milligrams now, which is great, but I'm in absolutely no rush to jump up to four milligrams because I know my doctor, and I trust my doctor, and I know that there are many bad side effects that could occur if you are taking too many hormones too quickly. It's also worth noting that if you are self-medicating, I'm not gonna tell you not to, that's none of my business, but just be aware that if you jump right into a, a high dosage, your body's not gonna know what to do with it, and it's gonna cancel itself out. So make sure you are following some kind of plan or a guide or something, okay? Okay? That being said, this is not a guide, okay? So don't take my experience as a guide because that's not the intent here. Do what you want, but just be careful, okay? I have noticed a significant decrease in the number of times I am misgendered on a daily basis. When I am misgendered, it's either by somebody that has known me for a long time, since before I started transitioning and it was an accident, and they quickly correct themselves, and I don't take offense to that. There is the occasional person Wait, it was that, and what was it else? Oh my god. This brings me into my next point. My memory has gone to shit. I will put down keys, turn around, and then forget where I put them. I will, I forget appointments, I forget birthdays, I forget everything, I forget everything. And I don't know if it's to do with hormones or if it's literally that my diet is terrible. And not diet as in I'm on a diet, but diet as in what I'm eating. I don't know, but that is a recent thing, and I forget everything that I was supposed to tell you about the second type of person that misgenders me. Probably somebody malicious. And I don't encounter those people very much because to be very honest with you, I don't go out very much, so I don't have the opportunity to run into malicious people very often. I think even on days where I'm not 100% passing and I'm outside, people understand they're supposed to be using she, her pronouns, and they do it out of the kindness of being a human being, out of respect for me as a person, and that's enough for me. You know, I don't care if they're aware that I'm a trans person, that's not something I'm trying to hide. I'm just trying to live my life, be happy, and be treated like a human. 
All right, so if that's something people are capable of doing, I like them, great. Now into physical effects of hormone replacement therapy at the half year mark. First thing I wanna clarify is that hormone replacement therapy for trans women, meaning if you are taking estrogen, even if you're not a binary gender, whatever, if you're taking estrogen, it's not going to alter your voice. Testosterone blockers softened my vocal cords, but it did not make any permanent change in my voice. And I keep seeing comments to this day, even after I made a video about voice training for trans women, where I explicitly said hormones do not affect your voice, I still see comments every day like, ooh, her voice has changed, and people are like, oh yeah, it's the estrogen, and it's just, it's not the estrogen. Okay, it's not. I will put an annotation to the voice training video here where you can learn more about that and a link in the description box. But the bottom line is estrogen will not change your voice, testosterone blockers will soften the cords, meaning it, it's gonna be easier for you to train your voice, but you have to train your voice if you want it to change. Estrogen's not going to change it. Please keep that in mind. So, moving on to the effects that have occurred, not ones that are impossible. My skin is about the same as it was last month. I still find like even if I don't moisturize on a daily basis, I have a bit of a shine, things are nice, I feel slippery in the shower, which is a new feeling. When I explain this to some of my cis girl friends, they are like, they laugh about it because it's a feeling they're familiar with, but it's not something unusual to them. And for me to go from feeling like a dry husk when I'm in water to feeling like, like a, like a, like a buttery biscuit is like a, it's different, okay? And it feels nice, it's nice. It's just less maintenance for me and I'm happy about that. Body hair continues to get more sparse. I'm happy about that. I've actually missed my last two laser hair removal appointments for my face because I, um, forgot about them because I forget everything. But I have another one soon, it's on my calendar, I can see it, I'm not missing this one, okay? So my facial hair has not changed at all because I have not been going to laser hair removal because I forgot. But my body hair is reducing and it feels good. I can pretty much, instead of shaving every single day, which is something that I had to do, I can now shave every other day. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal, not for my face, but for my body. And that is a nice feeling because shaving every single day leads to a lot of red marks and a lot of discomfort, and even every other day still. Okay, but it's still better. The next, and I would say most significant change and most different change from past months that I've experienced has been my body change. My body, yeah, I just switched bodies entirely, just hopped into someone else. No, I mean, my body changes, rather, I guess. So fat redistribution 100% has kicked into high gear, and I'm getting them yams now, finally, and I'm excited about it, so. This is definitely a small change, but I'm on the route, okay? Good stuff. In regards to that about waist training, I mentioned I would keep you guys posted on that, and the problem is the corset that I purchased was not necessarily the best thing for my intent, my intentions, and um, it kind of, like, I ripped it, and it's kind of broken, so now it gives me, like, not the best results. I'm going to look into a corset from Dark Garden Corsetry, which is a much higher end brand, and they make corsets specifically for waist training instead of just for cinching your body in for a certain outfit, and that's gonna be a better result, but it's also five times the price, so I mean, it's gonna be a little bit, but I'm gonna get that one next, I think. That covers all of the changes I've experienced. I wanna talk about my GoFundMe and my facial feminization surgery for a little bit now. So GoFundMe, I believe, has just passed $25,000. I'm not positive. I don't look at it every single day, um, but it is definitely up there, and I'm very grateful, and I feel like I say this every single time, but I, I, there's no way for me to express my gratitude, but just know that there's no way that I could do this without your help, and I, I am floored by the response that I've, I've gotten with that crowdfunding, um, crowdfunding initiative, crowdfunding uh, uh, task, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. I'm very happy and I'm very honored and I'm just so happy that you guys have wanted to help me in such a physical way. Now in terms of the facial feminization surgery, I know a lot of you will, I, I get comments a lot like, why would you change anything? You're so pretty. And like, I appreciate, I appreciate the intent. Okay, but listen, while being transgender is not a mental illness, body or gender dysphoria is absolutely a very debilitating mental illness. It's, I, it's, it's hard to explain it, it's hard to, there's not really an analogy I can give you, but it's, I've heard depression explained like when, you, when you're like really happy at one moment and then the next moment it's like nothing matters and you're like, you could be making cupcakes, right? And you're really excited about these cupcakes and then out of nowhere for no reason at all, you're just like, oh, okay. And it's a lot like that, but it's like a hatred directed at yourself, at your body, and it's not a fun experience. And even though I may look cute with this much makeup on, which believe me, it is a lot of makeup, a lot of contouring. While I may look cute in this light, with these bright studio lights, from this angle, with this professional camera, with this freaking makeup on, it's, it doesn't mean that I wake up feeling good about myself, it doesn't mean that I am 
invulnerable to mental illness or to issues or anything like that, okay? So while you may see what I want you to see, in reality, I need a lot of help. I need, I need to get through this, and FFS, facial feminization surgery, is the treatment. I wanna quickly go over what I'm getting done so that you guys have a better understanding of what's going to happen. Number one thing you need to know is my face is not going to look like a different person's face. I'm gonna look like the same person. I'm just going to have a much softer face. Let me just get my hair out of the way so you can see my face. The number one thing, the first thing, and the most important in my opinion that they're going to do is reshape the frame of my face. So that is the brow bone and the jawline. That's called mandible contouring and a brow reduction. If you are triggered by mentions of knives or like surgery or cosmetic surgery or anything related to that, be warned, I'm gonna talk about it right now, okay? So just maybe mute me or something, I don't know. So the doctor I'm going to, which I will not disclose because I know I'm gonna get people telling me, you know, their opinion and I don't want opinions on who I'm going to, I just want, I just want, I just wanna be good, okay? Let's listen. He works from inside of the mouth so there's no scarring around your jawline, which is great. That's fantastic because scarring around the jawline is very hard to hide. For the brow bone, they actually work by making an incision along or very close to the hairline and then they move the hairline down to cover up the scar and they work from inside of your skin there I guess to reduce the bone. It is worth mentioning there are two very different methods of facial feminization surgery. The first being one where you add bone to round out features, the other one being where you reduce the bone to soften the features and that's the one that I'm going for. They're both valid, they both have benefits um, for different face shapes but my face is large and I want to reduce it so that's why I'm going for that one. If you have a very small or narrow head you may want to go for the other option if it's something that you need but two different options okay so mandible contouring forehead next two things are my trachea shave and my lip lift um, the trachea shave is pretty straightforward everybody knows Adam's apples are a sign of high testosterone whatever mine comes and goes because my weight fluctuates quite a bit like 10 15 pounds it just shifts up and down when I'm heavier it's pretty much invisible but when I'm lower in weight it's very prominent so getting rid of it is gonna just solve that problem 100% and then lip lift is a lot of uh, trans girls opt for lip injections. The difference is lip injections fill out the shape you have and lip lifts give you a shape, okay? So I don't want like a Cupid's bow or like those big plump, that's not what I'm looking for. I just want the lip I have pulled up because from underneath, it's just like, I have a lip, okay? It's just not visible from straight ahead. So what they do is they pull it up, I don't know, I'll just have a cute upper lip, it'll be cute. And this is something the doctor actually recommended to me. He recommended several other things like cheek implants and things, but. And I know it's his job to do that, so I'm not like offended. But um, I opted out of most of those things and I'm just going to get the lip lift instead because it is going to be more cost effective, make me feel great, <laughs> no more dysphoria in the morning around my face. Just, it's gonna be a good time. I'm gonna feel much better. Recovery is going to be like living hell, but it's going to be worth it. And I'm going to have you with me the entire time. I'm gonna be live streaming. I'm going to be recording, vlogging, keeping you up to date on my progress as that goes through. And it's not going to be glamorous. I'm not gonna have the lights. I'm not gonna have everything. I'm not gonna have makeup on. It's gonna be very real. And when that time comes, I hope you guys will be happy for me and respectful and willing to learn about it, right? So that's all of the surgery talk. We're done with surgery talk, okay? We're done for now for this video. Capiche? I feel like I've covered every base that I am supposed to. So I'm going to head out now. One quick note before I go though is I am now live streaming on Twitch. I'm doing gaming live streams. I'm very much doing it in a test capacity right now, but there's a link down below if you want to go follow me there because I know a lot of you have been asking me to do a gaming channel or to start doing Let's Plays again. And I only did like four back in the day, like last year at some point. But instead of doing that, I want to keep this channel very focused on trans issues and my transition and life and I want to keep the gaming somewhere else so Twitch is where you can find all of my gaming streams and videos from now on okay so head on over there follow me there and we'll we'll get started and I'm sure within the next few months I'll have a very solid idea of how to do that and what I want to go with direction for Twitch and I'll keep you guys posted okay so thank you so much for hanging out with me this has been a pleasure just remember until next time you see me that you can do anything you want you are amazing you're gonna kick the world's butt you know liberation unconditionally baller amazing I love you and I will see you again very soon, okay? I promise. I love you so much, bye! If you don't know what I'm talking about yet, of course I'm talking about another Toronto meetup. And I'm very excited because it's something that's more than just a meetup, it's kind of like a collaboration, it's kind of like a big event for pride.